Imagine it as the dead of winter in a remote village where the wind doesn't just blow. It bites through wool, wood, and bone alike. And the only thing standing between you and a frozen grave is the pile of logs in your shed. Now, imagine your neighbor a quiet, weathered man named, even spent the entire autumn digging a massive hole in the center of his cabin floor instead of stacking wood like a sane person. While everyone else was sweating under the weight of oak and birch, even was hauling heavy fire bricks and strange, silty clay into his home, burying what looked like a tomb beneath his floorboards. The village elders shook their heads, the local gossips called him a fool, and the younger men laughed openly, mocking him for planting a stove, as if he expected warmth to grow like a potato. They told him he'd be the first to freeze when the Siberian winds arrived, but Avon just went about his business, his hands stained with soot and clay whispering that he wasn't building a heater, but a heart for his home. The mockery reached a fever pitch during the first great frost in November. When the temperature plummeted so fast, the birds froze mid-flight, and the river turned to solid glass overnight. In every other house, the chimneys were belching thick. Black smoke 24 hours a day, as families frantically fed their stoves every few hours just to keep the indoor air above freezing. People were waking up three times a night, shivering, just to throw more logs onto the fire, because the moment the flames died, the heat vanished through the walls. But when the neighbors walked past Ivan's small cabin, they noticed something unsettling. There was no smoke coming from his chimney, no light of a roaring fire in his window, and no sound of an axe splitting wood in his yard. They whispered that the mad mason had finally succumbed to the cold, or perhaps he had fled in the night, leaving his half-finished hole in the ground as a monument to his own stupidity. Curiosity eventually got the better of the village blacksmith, a man who prided himself on knowing every hearth in the valley, and he decided to knock on Avon's door to see if he needed a proper burial. He expected to find a frost-covered room and a shivering man, but when the door swung open, he was hit by a wall of dry, radiant heat so intense it felt like stepping into a midsummer afternoon. There was no fire burning in the hearth, no wood stacked by the door, and no smoke in the air, yet the temperature was a perfect steady warmth that seemed to radiate from the very earth itself. Even was sitting at his table in a light linen shirt, sipping tea as if it were July, while the rest of the town was buried under four layers of wool and sheepskin. The blacksmith stood frozen in the doorway, his jaw dropping as he looked at the empty fireplace. Unable to comprehend how a house with no visible fire could be the warmest place in the province. Even just smiled, patted the floorboards where his buried creation sat hidden beneath the wood, and invited the stunned blacksmith to take off his heavy coat. He explained that while the village had spent their lives fighting the fire, he had spent his life learning how to capture it, turning a few hours of flames into a week of comfort. The secret wasn't in how much wood you burned but in how you forced the smoke to travel through a labyrinth of stone before it was allowed to escape. As the blacksmith sat down, feeling the heat seep into his aching bones from the ground up, he realized that the man they had all mocked was sitting on a revolutionary secret that would change the way they survived the winter forever. But as even began to explain the bell system and the hidden chambers beneath their feet, he dropped a hint that made the blacksmith's blood run. Code a warning that this much power if built incorrectly wouldn't just heat a home, it could turn it into a ticking time bomb. The secret that even had buried beneath his floor was a marvel of ancient engineering known as the Russian masonry heater, but with a sophisticated twist that defied the common logic of the time. Most people believe that to get more heat, you needed a bigger fire. But Ivan understood the laws of thermodynamics before they were even written in textbooks. Knowing that a roaring fire actually wastes 80% of its energy by sending it straight up the chimney. He had spent weeks meticulously layering fire bricks in a series of descending and ascending. Bells or chambers creating a path so long and winding that the smoke had to surrender every ounce of its heat to the stones before it reached the outdoors. By the time the air exited Ivan's chimney, it wasn't hot at all. It was barely lukewarm because all that thermal energy had been soaked up by the massive weight of the masonry buried under the floor. This was the battery of the house hundreds of pounds of stone that, once heated, 
would slowly bleed that warmth back into the room for days on end through a process of infrared radiation. As the blacksmith spread the word, the mockery turned into an intense, almost desperate curiosity, and soon the very neighbors who had laughed at Avon were lining up at his door, begging to see the magic stove. They watched in disbelief as Avon performed his daily ritual. He would take a small, modest bundle of wood, barely enough to cook a pot of soup in a normal hearth, and light a fast, incredibly hot fire that lasted only an hour. While a normal stove would have cooled down the moment those logs turned to ash, Ivan's floor stayed hot to the touch, and the air in the cabin remained a constant, cozy temperature regardless of the blizzards howling outside. He explained to them that his stove operated on the principle of thermal mass, where the heavy bricks acted like a sponge for heat, holding on to it, and releasing it so slowly that he only had to light a fire once every few days. The villagers were mesmerized, watching him walk around barefoot in the middle of a Siberian winter, while they were still struggling with frozen water pails and soot-stained lungs. However, the buried nature of the stove was what truly baffled them. As even had integrated the heater into the very foundation of the house, using the ground itself as an insulator. This meant the heat didn't just hover near the ceiling like it does in most homes. It rose from the floorboards, keeping the inhabitants' feet warm and creating a convection cycle that eliminated cold spots and drafts. It was a complete reversal of everything they knew about survival, turning the home from a drafty box into a living, breathing organism that stored energy. Even showed them the clean outdoors and the dampers he used to seal the heat inside once the fire was out, a crucial step that prevented the chimney from sucking the warm air out of the house like a giant straw. He had essentially built a primitive version of a nuclear reactor's core, contained within brick and clay, managed by a man who had been dismissed as a village idiot just weeks prior. But as the neighbors began to beg even to build similar stoves in their own homes, a dark cloud appeared over the success of the invention, as not everyone was happy with this new magic. The local wood merchants, who made their living selling massive quantities of timber to desperate families during the winter, saw their profits threatened by a man who could heat a home with a fraction of the fuel. Rumors began to circulate that Even was practicing witchcraft, or that his buried stove was actually a hazard that would eventually poison the air or burn the village to the light. The tension in the village began to shift from mockery to suspicion, and Even realized that his greatest challenge wasn't surviving the cold, but surviving the greed and fear of the men he was trying to help. Just as the first neighbor agreed to pay even to install a heater, a terrifying accident in a nearby town involving a poorly built masonry stove gave his enemies the ammunition they needed to shut him down forever. The news of the accident spread like wildfire. A wealthy merchant in the next province had tried to copy even S design using cheap materials and an inexperienced builder resulting in a carbon monoxide leak that nearly killed his entire family in their sleep. This was the danger Avon had tried to warn the blacksmith about that a masonry heater is a precision instrument, and if the bells aren't balanced or the seals aren't perfect, the very system that saves you can become a silent killer. The village council, fueled by the wood merchant's complaints, moved to ban Ivan's buried stoves entirely, calling them deceptive traps and demanding he tear his own heater out to prove he wasn't hiding something sinister. Even stood his ground in the center of the village square, his hands still callous from the bricks, and made them an offer. He would let the council members stay in his home for 48 hours during the upcoming. Volfrost, the coldest three days of the year, without a single log being added to the fire. The challenge was accepted, and three of the most skeptical men in the village locked themselves inside Even's cabin, convinced they would be begging to come out within six hours as the sub-zero temperature seeped through the walls. Even stayed outside in the communal barn, watching as the thermometer dropped to levels that turned breath into ice crystals instantly, waiting for the screams for help that never came. Inside the cabin, the men were stunned to find that even though the fire had been extinguished hours before they entered, the bricks beneath the floor were humming with a deep, subterranean warmth that made the air feel soft and sweet. They didn't just survive. They spent the 48 hours in the most comfortable environment they had ever experienced, eventually emerging with red cheeks and wide eyes, admitting that the madman had indeed conquered the winter. 
The ban was lifted. The wood merchants were silenced, and Ivan spent the rest of his years traveling from province to province, teaching the art of the masonry heater to anyone willing to listen. Today, the principles Avon use are recognized by engineers worldwide as some of the most efficient ways to heat a home. With modern rocket mass heaters and finished fireplaces still utilizing that same labyrinth of stone concept, Avon's story isn't just about a stove. It's about the power of observation over tradition and how one person's refusal to follow the crowd can lead to a breakthrough that saves lives and force alike. He proved that the most sophisticated solutions are often the ones that look the simplest on the surface, and that true innovation often requires burying your best ideas deep, where they can grow undisturbed by the laughter of others. The buried stove became a symbol of self-reliance, a reminder that with a little bit of clay, a lot of patience.